We now begin the narration of the book itself, beginning with Part 1, Ajamil's Near-Death Experience, Chapter 1, Separating the Men from the Animals, from Canto 1, Chapter 1, Texts 21 through 22 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukdev Goswami said to King Pariksit, In the city known as Kanyakupja or Kanoj in present-day India, there lived a Brahmin named Ajamil who married a prostitute maidservant and lost all his Brahminical qualities because of the association of that low-class woman. Ajamil gave trouble to others by arresting them, by cheating them in gambling, or by directly plundering them. This was the way he earned his livelihood and maintained his wife and children. Purport Although Ajamil was born of a Brahmin father and strictly followed the regulative principles, no meat-eating, no illicit sex, no intoxication and no gambling, he fell in love with a prostitute and therefore all his good qualities were lost. As soon as a person abandons the regulative principles, he engages in various kinds of sinful activities. The regulative principles serve to keep us on the standard of human life. But if we abandon them, we fall down into illusory life or maya. If we want to advance in spiritual life, we must follow the regulative principles and rectify the mistakes of our past lives and this present life. Only those who have become free from all kinds of sinful reactions and are now engaged in pious activities can fully understand God. Persons who commit sinful activities and who are overly attached to bodily comforts and mundane friendship, society and family affection cannot be spiritually self-realized. The fault of illicit connection with women is that it destroys all one's Brahminical qualities. Ajamil abandoned all the regulative principles due to his association with a prostitute. He became a cheater and a thief. One who acts dishonestly will be punished. He may escape the king's or government's law, but he can never escape God's law. The materialists think, I am cheating God and I can continue to gratify my senses by all nefarious activities. But the Shastras or scriptures state that such persons are cheating their own happiness in the end because they will have to accept a material body again and suffer accordingly. A man who is born in a Brahmin family is expected to be truthful and self-controlled, to be fully cognizant of spiritual life and its practical application, and to have complete faith in the statements of the Shastras. If a person does not follow the Shastras, he becomes degraded. The great sages and rishis throughout the world have given guidance and their words are recorded in the Shastras. But rascals and fools misinterpret the scriptures and misguide the people. At present, the Bhagavad Gita is interpreted in so many different ways and these so-called explanations are accepted by the innocent public as authoritative knowledge. One interpreter explains that the battlefield of Kurukshetra refers to the material body and that the five Pandava brothers are really the five senses of the material body. But this is not the proper understanding. How can anyone explain the Bhagavad Gita when he does not understand it? Such an attempt is nonsense.
To understand the bona fide science of God, one must approach a bona fide spiritual master and hear the Bhagavad Gita from him. We have to follow the great personalities, the previous acharyas or spiritual masters. That will be to our profit. We should not speculate and make up our own statements. We should simply accept the injunctions given by the great acharyas because that is the process of the Vedic system. One must approach a bona fide spiritual master and inquire from him submissively. The absolute truth is explained in the scriptures and the scriptures are explained by the spiritual master or a saintly person. Whatever the bona fide self-realized spiritual master says must be accepted. There is no room for interpretation of the Shastras. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill just as a child lifts a mushroom. He did it so easily, but people do not believe it. Those who do not believe in the Bhagavatam interpret an indirect meaning. The meaning is clear, and there is nothing to be misunderstood, but these rascals draw their own conclusions nonetheless. When the language is clear, why should we interpret? By interpretation, so-called scholars and theologians have played havoc with the Vedic literature. No bona fide Acharya has ever interpreted the Shastras according to his own whims, but many so-called modern scholars and leaders have done so, and therefore people are gliding down into the most abominable conditions of material existence. In the interest of the people, these rascals should be exposed. Therefore, we are presenting the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Here the Srimad Bhagavatam says that the Brahmin Ajamil became attached to a prostitute and thus lost his Brahminical qualifications. He was a young man of about twenty when this happened. Because of his illicit association with the prostitute, Ajamil was forced to live by begging, borrowing, stealing, and gambling. These verses indicate how degraded one becomes simply by indulging in illicit sex with a prostitute. Illicit sex is not possible with chaste women, but only with unchaste women. The more society allows prostitution and illicit sex, the more impetus it gives to cheaters, thieves, plunderers, drunkards, and gamblers. Therefore, we first advise all the disciples in our Krishna consciousness movement to avoid illicit sex, which is the beginning of all abominable life and which is followed by meat-eating, gambling, and intoxication, one after another. Of course, restraint is difficult, but it is quite possible if one fully surrenders to Krishna, since all abominable habits gradually become distasteful for a Krishna-conscious person. While in his time Ajamil was an exception, in the present age there are millions of Ajamils. But if illicit sex is allowed to increase, the entire society will be condemned, for it will be full of rogues, thieves, cheaters, and so forth. Therefore, if we actually want to improve the world situation, we have to take to Krishna consciousness, as that gives the best service to human society, both materially and spiritually. Whatever abominable characteristics we have developed, we have only to take to the process of bhakti yoga or devotional service in order to completely eradicate them. We have developed so many anartas or unwanted habits the chief of which are meat-eating, intoxication, illicit sex, and gambling. But we can curb them by accepting the principles of bhakti-yoga, as they are presented in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. Scarcely anyone knows these Vedic scriptures, and therefore no one heeds their instructions. People would rather read all kinds of books by all kinds of rascals, but the result of such books is to kill Krishna consciousness. 
in illusion, a person may think he can get rid of unwanted habits and be saved by some artificial mystic meditation. And in fact, at one time it was possible to attain liberation by practicing Ashtanga Yoga or Eightfold Yogic Meditation. But at present, almost no one can follow this process, and artificial attempts at yoga will not help us. Therefore, to help the fallen people of this age of Kali, the Supreme Lord appeared about 500 years ago as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He knew that the people of this age would not even be able to follow the regulative principles, what to speak of practicing Ashtanga Yoga. Therefore, he gave the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, so that we can gradually be elevated to the highest position of spiritual life. Other processes of purification or sacrifice cannot be followed in this age, because for the most part people are too degraded. But anyone may take to this process of chanting Hare Krishna. As it is said in the Brahan Naradiya Purana, Canto 3, Chapter 8, Verse 126, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Iva Kevalam, Kalo Nastyeva, 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 Gatir Anyata, which means, quote, In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is chanting the holy name of the Lord. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. Unquote. Chanting the holy name of the Lord is always superbly effective, but it is especially effective in this age of Kali. Its practical effectiveness will now be explained by Shukdev Goswami through the history of a Jamil who was freed from the hands of Yamaraj, the universal judge, simply because of chanting the holy name of Narayan. <music> to benefit fully from chanting the holy name of the Lord, one needs to chant offenselessly. And to guarantee offenseless chanting, some austerity is required. First of all, one should not indulge in illicit sex. Sex is one of the bodily needs, so it is sanctioned in the Shastras to some degree. One is allowed to live peacefully with one's wife and have sex for begetting children. Other than to beget children, however, there is no need of indulging in sex. One who does not take the responsibility of family life but remains a bachelor and engages in illicit sex is considered irresponsible and he will have to suffer the consequences. Of course, one who thinks that family life is too big a responsibility can forego it and thus avoid a lot of trouble. Family responsibility is very great. Therefore, if a man feels he cannot accept the responsibility, he should remain a brahmachari, a celibate student. A person who practices the science of brahmacharya under the care of a spiritual master automatically becomes 75% free from material entanglement. Today, however, no one wants to undergo the austerities of brahmacharya. Everyone wants to remain unmarried but also engage in sex. In this way people are losing all good character. To maintain a woman who is nothing more than a prostitute and engage in illicit sex with her for producing children is sinful. Such children are unwanted, varna sankara, and in this way society becomes degraded. A Jamil became attracted to a prostitute and with her he begot ten children. He became so degraded that he could not execute honest business to support his large family, and he was forced to beg, borrow, and steal to maintain them. If a person indulges in illicit sex, intoxication and gambling automatically follow. His expenses will be unlimited, 
and to meet all his expenses he will have to adopt methods of cheating and stealing. The basis for Ajamil's degradation was his illicit connection with the prostitute. Therefore, in the practice of Krishna consciousness, we do not allow any illicit sex. Devotees must either get married or remain celibate. This regulation is very effective for maintaining a high standard of purity.